Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this English lesson about sounds our bodies make. Can't say the title without giggling a little bit. I think uh, some of you have rightly identified in the chat. This should be a funny lesson. Some parts of it might be funny. Um we'll start in about 23 seconds. Let me just confirm that everything is working properly. Sounds like everything is a go. We'll start in about 10 seconds. I think I have everything in place here and we should have a good lesson I think. Two one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about sounds our bodies make. So, we all have bodies and our bodies can make sounds. Obviously, we can talk and I'm not going to talk about talking in this lesson. There are sounds that our bodies make involuntarily. That means we don't decide. It's just a sound our body makes and there are sounds that we make voluntarily and I'll talk about both of those types of sounds in this lesson. Some of these sounds I will make. Some of these sounds I will not make while we're doing the lesson. So, stay tuned for that. If it's something simple like snap your fingers, I will make that sound but if it's one of the other ones, I think I will avoid that. So, we all have bodies. Those bodies make sounds sometimes and in this English lesson, we'll talk about 20 over 25 of them. Hey, I do wanna mention one very important thing and that's this. This is Dave the Canadian's very last live stream. So, Dave's life is busier, getting busier uh, and Dave will not have time to join us. Dave has been here, I think, for four years or close to four years. Um just a little bit of a backstory. Dave is a university student. He's actually one of my former students when I was a teacher and when I needed people to moderate the live stream because things were getting crazy, Dave was one of the people I asked to do that and he said he would. Absolutely no problem. He has been a faithful helper here on my YouTube channel. So, Dave, just as a message straight to you, I really appreciate all the work that you've done. It has been awesome and I wish you all the best as you continue your learning at university and as you eventually go into the workforce. So, Dave, thank you from me and I think thank you from all of the people who have enjoyed you taking care of the chat, uh, taking care of people who misbehave, finding links, chatting with people a little bit. That has been very much appreciated. So, if everyone in the chat could just say thank you, Dave, uh, that would be awesome. I think Dave would appreciate that. So, Dave, Once again, I hope things go well for you as you go forward. I'll still see Dave once in a while uh, but you won't see Dave. So, it's a good time to say goodbye and that you appreciate him. I did wanna mention that this lesson does also have a study pack. If you look in the description below, there's a link. I've been experimenting with making study packs. If that is something that's interesting to you, why don't you take a look at it? Um but I think I should go over the rules and get the lesson started. If you want to have good English conversations in the chat, please do that. Take the time to chat with each other while you watch the lesson. If you have a question, please use the link to ask the question and I will try to answer it and try to ask questions that are on topic, okay? So, if it's off topic, I might skip it. So, it's about if it's about body sounds, I will definitely answer it. Uh, and I think that's it. I do wanna say hi to know that John Wedge, Key Park, Speak English with this guy, Caitlin, Mode Eggs, Lolly Lolly, Freddie Wolf, Arena, uh, Peter, uh, Dave the Canadian, of course, um, Naomi, uh, Paco San, John Wedge, and everyone else who is here. It is awesome to see you. Let's, uh, let's get this lesson started. What do you think? Let's do that. So, one of the first sounds you can decide to make is you can snap your fingers. I do it by putting these two fingers together and going like and pushing really hard and then going like that. The sound is actually from when this finger, it's not working very well. There we go. When this finger hits here, I think. I think that's where the sound comes from. We sometimes snap our fingers to get someone's attention. It's considered rude though in a restaurant to snap your fingers if you want the server or waitress or waiter to come over. Um but sometimes in the classroom, I'll snap my fingers at students. Sometimes if they're misbehaving, I'll be like, hey, stop that. So, it's a way, I'm doing it too much probably. It's a way 
to get someone's attention. And it's a sound our bodies make that we decide to make. You might also tap or drum your fingers. I'm not sure how I'm gonna demonstrate this one. Um have you ever been in a meeting and someone is doing that on the table? Uh sometimes when people are impatient, when they're waiting, sometimes if they're at the counter at the doctor's office talking to the receptionist, they might drum their fingers because they're a little bit impatient. So, we would say tap your fingers or drum your fingers. That's the action you would do. This one I'm very familiar with. This is an involuntary sound. Now, if you don't know the difference between a sound that is voluntary or involuntary, an involuntary sound happens and you can't control it. Sometimes, I'm really really hungry and you will hear my stomach growling or you will hear my stomach rumbling. You can use either word. Um sometimes when I'm at market, it's really busy and we don't have time to eat and then all of a sudden, my stomach will start to growl. So, this is a sound our bodies make when we're really really hungry. Um it's definitely a sound our bodies make uh when we need food. So, sometimes your stomach will growl. It's not nice when you're in a meeting and your stomach is growling. Usually, then I just kind of slip out and go have a little snack but if you're hungry, your stomach might growl or your stomach might rumble. (sighs) So, a gasp is like a quick intake of air when you're surprised about something. If someone told you bad news, you might go (gasps) so you can hear I'm quickly taking air in (gasps) and I have a bit of a surprised look on my face. We sometimes cover our mouth when we gasp like (gasps) so generally, it's a sound we make when we're surprised about something. I don't gasp very often. Not a lot surprises me anymore but every once in a while, I might go (gasps) that's interesting or (gasps) no way. So, it's a really quick intake of breath. It's hard to demonstrate but I think you kind of heard the sound. So, we do have to cover these two. Burp or belch. I'm not gonna demonstrate either of these. When you burp, it's because you have gas in your stomach. Usually, I'm I'm trying to think. The best example is if you drink carbonated soda or pop we call it in Canada and you have a lot of gas in your stomach, you might burp. A burp is when you release gas from your stomach through your mouth um and a belch is just a really long loud burp um and you sometimes burp after eating. Sometimes you'll eat food and you'll burp when you're done eating um but yes, it's releasing gas from your stomach through your mouth. I'm not going to demonstrate. I'm definitely not going to demonstrate this one. I described this in a previous lesson as when air or gas comes out the other end. I described it as the other end um and I put this in the thumbnail of this video as well. Um first of all, what can I say about farting? Kids think farts are hilarious. Kids think farts are funny. Farts smell. They are not pleasant um and the phrases like in our house, if I walk into a room and it has a funny smell, I might say who farted? But at work or at school, it's not polite to fart or if you think someone farted, it's not polite to ask who did it. Generally, farts in public are not um are not good things. Enough about farting. Let, let's go to the next slide to clap your hands. So, when you clap your hands, generally, this is done after you watch a performance and it's called applause. So, often, when I go and watch a show, not a movie but if I go and watch a play, when the play is done, there is applause. People clap their hands. Um I'm doing it quite quietly um but generally, that's what it's for. You can also use it to get attention. Again, as a parent, I might say to one of my kids, hey, listen to me. So, I might make that sound to indicate I want them to listen but mostly, uh, when you clap your hands, it's done as a show a show of appreciation for a job well done. Crack your knuckles. So, I can't do this one. 
this my my knuckles don't crack. I'll make the sound effect with my mouth. Some people can go like this. That was my mouth making the sound and they can make their knuckles crack. They can make these these little popping sounds when they do that and they might do it like this as well. They might just go like that and you might hear a crack or a pop. I've never been able to do it. I don't know if that's a good thing or not but definitely when you do that um we would say that you are cracking your knuckles. It's not a pleasant sound. I don't really enjoy that sound at all. Hiccup. So, this is another involuntary sound. I can pretend to have hiccups <laughs> but it's when somehow I think it's your called your diaphragm. Above your stomach, there's the muscle that helps you breathe, not your lungs and I think it's that muscle moves involuntarily every minute or every 30 seconds <laughs> and you go like that. Hopefully, pretending to have the hiccups doesn't actually cause the hiccups. The most annoying thing about hiccups is um you can't stop. They you just have to wait for them to go away. Some people will drink water to try and get rid of hiccups. Some people will try to swallow three times to get rid of hiccups but generally, they are very annoying and not a fun thing to have and that's how you describe it. You say, oh, I have the hiccups. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't. Hey, let's get to some questions. Let's do that. Uh, let me find let me have a sip of water. Not because I have the hiccups. Although, that is um that would be pretty wild, wouldn't it? If Bob actually got the hiccups while teaching an English lesson about hiccups. Let's <laughs> Renata, is there a verb in English besides fart to say when the fart is noisy or silent? In Portuguese, we say pedar, noisy and soltarpum, silent. Break wind maybe? No, we do have a phrase though called silent but deadly and that's <laughs> I hate describing farts. That's to describe a fart that you don't hear but is very, very smelly. So, that is the only thing that I can think of. Uh by the way, I think this is an important lesson. I know I'm laughing about some of it but uh definitely it's important to be able to describe these sounds. Kurdish, my cherished uncle Bob, could you explain the difference between groan, sigh and grunt in terms of the sound they represent and the situations in which they are typically used? So, a groan and I'll talk about groan a bit more later. It's like ah. Uh, it's like a loud show of um yeah, what would I describe it as? Disinterest or annoyance? Like you have to um if someone tells you you have to do something you don't wanna do, you'd be like ah and that's a groan. A sigh would be like so it's expressing the same emotion but much quieter. You're just expelling a bit of air and a grunt. I don't have this in the lesson. If you lift something really heavy um like if I was lifting a big block, I'd be like so, a grunt is a sound you make when exerting yourself. Tennis players will often grunt like uh, uh. So, it's it's a slightly different sound and it's used when you are exerting yourself. Uh let's see here. From Sela, hello teacher Bob. My question is that there are joyful sounds, pressure measurement for example and joyful ones, the bell of the last session. So, there are joyful sounds like but they're usually words like we say woohoo or yay or we even yell awesome sometimes. I can't think of a sound we make. I'm looking at all of my slides here where it's actually a sound of joy but woohoo that'd be a good one. You almost sing it a little bit right? Like woohoo. I got I got a new job. Woohoo. Awesome. So, from Hafiez, refraining <laughs> from about farts. Haha. <laughs> My body snaps, crackles and pops as I get older and older. True. But just wanna say to Dave the Canadian, we love you and we'll miss you. Yes. Thanks again, Dave for your work and Hafiez, thank you for the shout out to Dave there. That is awesome. Uh let's see here. Ahmed. Hello, teacher. Is it good to hold fart in yourself or is it good to let it go? Thanks in advance. I'm not a medical doctor. So, I'm not gonna give advice about what you should do in that situation. 
Nathan, is farting in public rude? Yes, definitely in North America, in Canada, it would be rude to fart in a public situation. Yes, definitely. Uh, new words with MP. Hi. What can we this voice say when someone jump on the mountain? If you jump off a mountain, you'd be like, ah. So, it wouldn't be one of these body sounds. It would actually be you're expressing yourself with your voice but that's what that's what it would be. Dimitri says, hi, Mr. Bob. Not only kids think farting is hilarious. LOL. We have a local expression. If someone asks who farted, it goes like, Whoever smelled it the last, whoever smelled it, that one has done it. So, we have an expression in English. I can't believe how many fart expressions I'm teaching. We have the expression, um, whoever smelt it, dealt it. Um, so, in when you play cards, you deal the cards. By the way, I'm gonna do a lesson on that soon. Um, so, we kind of say like if someone asks who farted, then we blame that person. Whoever smelt it, dealt it. Uh, from Henry. Hi, teacher Bob. With the advance of aging, what do you call the clicking sound? When we move our strained muscles between arms, we call it a clicking sound or a popping sound. Like, oh, my elbow makes a clicking sound now. Or when I move my wrist like this, it makes a small popping sound. So, clicking and popping would be the two words that we would use. Uh, let's see here. Mode says, Man, this is getting out of hand. Everyone is talking about farts. I'd rather go fart around. So, the English expression, thanks Mode for that. The English expression to fart around means to just be silly and do like if you're supposed to be working and instead you're just farting around, it means you're not working. Um and then backing up, Rabia says, what's the meaning of the word belch, belching? A belch is a really loud, long burp. So, that's how I would describe a belch. Okay, let's see here. Let me go through the chat a bit and then we'll get back to the lesson. Madi says, what's up man? To Dave the Canadian. Nice to see you chatting. Daquan says, hi to teacher Brent. Very cool. Let's see here. Lots of love for Dave the Canadian. That's good to see. Very nice. Let's get back to the lesson. That's what I'm gonna do next. Whistle. So, I can't sing on tune. But I can whistle pretty good. So, whistling is when you basically do what this guy's doing. So, let me see here. I'm trying to not whistle an actual song because I don't want to get a copyright strike on the video. But whistling is when you produce you produce sound with your lips and tongue. And then some people can do it where um they can I don't I don't know how to do it but they can use their fingers to whistle as well. I can't do that but I can whistle like that. I don't know if I need to talk about this anymore but people sometimes like to whistle while they're doing stuff. Um sometimes when I'm by myself in my classroom, I might whistle while I'm working. That's an actual phrase or is it a le- song lyric? Whistle while you work. Um but whistling if you don't have music to listen to, you might whistle. You might whistle a song that you know. (laughs) Sneeze. So, this is involuntary as well as coughing. Sneezing. We used to sneeze like this like achoo but we've been told now to sneeze into our elbow. The English word is achoo. I've said that. That's the sound. That's how we describe the sound when you sneeze but you sneeze when maybe you're sick and you have a stuffed up nose or maybe um you've got something in your nose. Maybe you breathed in a lot of dust and you're like achoo, achoo and then it's like a quick we would say you expel air through your nose when you sneeze. Um sometimes people will have a sneezing fit. That's when you sneeze a whole bunch of times in a row. That's not very fun especially if you're at work or sitting in a class. And then a cough like (coughs) sorry. (coughs) We're supposed to cough like that now. Uh that's when you expel air from your lungs quickly through your mouth and through your throat um usually because you are sick. Maybe you have a cold or you have congestion which means your lungs have lots of fluid in them and then you cough 
to get it out. Pretty common terms, sneeze and cough. <sighs> so, we usually cover our mouth when we yawn and that is the, I'm not actually bored by the way. That is the sound we make. So, it's like, <sighs> so you can see my mouth opens really wide. Um, you yawn when you're tired but sometimes people yawn when they're a little bit bored as well, okay? So, if I'm if it's late in the day, I might <sighs> it's getting a little bit contagious now. I I might yawn a little bit because I'm tired. If I'm sitting listening to someone, maybe you're yawning right now because you're bored with this lesson um but that is a yawn. Um when you yawn when you're tired, it's you don't decide to yawn. It's just like <sighs> <sighs> that was that might have been a real one. Okay, back to the lesson. I need to get to some more exciting slides. Sigh. So, we had this a little earlier in the questions. A sigh is an expression of boredom or slight annoyance or that you don't agree with someone and it sounds like this. It's like 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 if my son said If my son asked, can I borrow the van? And I said, sure, but please buy some gas. He might be like, (sighs) like he might be like making a big sigh because he doesn't like it that I told him he had to put some gas in the van. But definitely when you sigh, it is an expression um that you you don't agree with someone or you don't like what they said or you're not happy about what's happening. Um So, when you hum, this is kind of hard to describe. Your lips are together. So, it's different than whistling. Some people will hum a song like I almost hummed a real song there. What song was that? Yankee Doodle Dandy? That would be a that would be a song that Brent would hum, not me. I don't know if that was the right song but I actually do some humming before I do these live lessons to get my voice ready. So, you can hear it's not singing. It's not whistling. It's just making sounds with your throat and um your vocal cords. So, you have two muscles that help you speak. I think that's what humming is. Um and we do it when we want to um maybe we're listening to a song and we want to hum along. Maybe we're just walking and we just want to hum a tune because we're happy that day but humming uh kind of a cool thing to do. Mm-hmm. So, this is an interesting one. So, usually only kids do this and we don't use this regularly but I wanted to explain it. You can make your tongue click or pop. So, I shouldn't say adults don't do this. I think my grandma used to do this if I was being bad. She would say don't do that like so my tongue goes to the roof of my mouth and then I pull it down quickly. It's probably similar to snapping. It's like when the tongue hits the bottom um but we call this clicking your tongue or popping your tongue and uh sorry for the uh kind of strange looking picture. I couldn't find a really good picture of this one but I'm trying to think of when I use that sound. You sometimes use this when you're like talking to a baby or maybe a dog like hey maybe. Anyways, not used regularly but something that you can do. Pop your mouth. So, this is a kind of a weird one. You can do this with your finger. Not very good at it. But you can just do it with your lips. We don't use this sound for anything. (laughs) It's just a sound you can make. Kids think it's hilarious to make a popping sound with their finger. It's kind of fun to make that sound. Makes my microphone levels go really high when I do that. But you can pop your mouth. That's what we would call it. A raspberry. So, there's no other good way to demonstrate this without um this being bad for my mic but you can do it with your lips or with your tongue. 
Both of these are called a raspberry or a raspberry sound. Again, these are sounds that adults don't often make. Let me let me go back on that though. Adults don't often do this. Not very common. Adults do do this though. They do it when they're tired. Like if I'm really tired at night, I might say to Jen, I am tired. So, I blow air through my lips. It makes my lips flap and it makes kind of a funny sound. So, I don't know if in your part of the world, this is used for other things. Kids very often will be like, they'll do that to each other to bug each other and stuff like that. But uh, definitely a sound that you can make uh, if you're interested in making sounds like that. Hey, we're gonna go to questions. I'm gonna do a few questions and then we're gonna go to members only chat. Um this lesson's a bit shorter. We're two thirds of the way through. So, please hang out hang around. Uh let me do a couple questions from the form and then we will move on unless there aren't any questions from the form. Let's see here. Let me double check. I think I just misclicked something. Yep, there are no more questions on the form. Hey, if you guys have a question, now's the time to ask for sure. Let me just fix something here. I have to reload the form because I mistakenly. Let's do this. We'll go here. Um let me see if it's loading. There we go. Okay. Answer, answer, answer. I have to reload the form so I'm back at the beginning and there we go. Okay. So, we'll leave it there. Hey, so a couple things. We're gonna do a uh, members only chat in just a minute. I do want to mention once again, there are uh worksheets and the original slides available for this lesson. If you look in the description below, it'll say like, hey, there's a study pack for this lesson. You can go and have a look at that. I've had good success with people um getting those study packs, buying them. So, that's been very, very cool. I am just gonna check. Yes, excellent. Just gonna check that. If you're wondering what's happening right now, Bob is going to start members only chat as soon as he can get to that part. We will then get back to the lesson in about 12 minutes. Let me see here. There we go. If you are a member, you can ask questions directly in the chat right now and I will answer them. And in about 11 or 12 minutes, we will finish off the lesson. So, if you're one of the 395 people watching, don't forget to click the subscribe button if you're new and uh don't leave because the lesson will resume quite soon. Um Hafiez says the word blowing raspberry sounds weird. It does sound weird. Madi says turn into a funny kid. Yes, I am becoming a kid during this lesson. Know that says I sometimes do it when it is very hot. Yes, I would do this like it is hot out today. It is really hot today. Like you make this sound to express that. Very good. Know that. Uh let's see. Omran Omran says this lesson should be under a bridge. Brent did an English lesson under a bridge. Two videos actually. You should go and watch them. Uh let's see. Let's see down here. Kayla says the lesson is very funny. There we go. Batana says in Thailand, we do tongue click to call dogs. Yeah, I could see that. We use it to get the attention of animals sometimes. Uh let's see here. Teethorn says, oh, MP, we're, our new words with MP has gifted five memberships. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you very much, uh, new words with MP for doing that. So, uh, Ty, YK, Mick, Kevin, and Natalia, Fabian, have all been given memberships from New Words with MP. So, thank you, New Words. That was an awesome gift. John Wedge saying to Brent, um, Axel's voice was awesome. A friend of mine always said that Axel had a voice like a guitar. Oh, Axel Rose from um, Welcome to the Jungle. Guns and Roses. There we go. Took me a while to figure that one out. Uh, Mode says, hey, Mr. Bob, maybe you want to plug your channel on Billy Billy. Oh, by the way, I did start uploading to Billy Billy which is a platform in China. If you're there and you wanna watch my videos on a legit channel, you can watch them there. Um if you go to my community page, you can find that information there. Let's see here. Tanya says, hi, Bob. Maybe it becomes embarrassing for me but would you confirm that blowing your nose loudly in public is considered rude in North America? 
generally I will blow my nose quietly if I need to blow my nose. If I'm teaching and I have a runny nose, I will quietly blow my nose. If I have to blow my nose very loudly, I will take a tissue or Kleenex and step into the hallway. So, yes, somewhat. It would be somewhat rude to blow your nose loudly. Yaroslav says, yeah, yet I am between B2C1 level English. There is still a whole lot to learn from you. The wisest teacher, Bob, I owe you one. So, it's interesting because as I was making this lesson and I showed it to Jen, Jen's comment was, you're teaching very common things that most of your viewers probably don't know. And it's true. All of the words and phrases today are very common. So, someone like Brent, a native English speaker, he knows all these words and phrases. Hopefully, he can confirm that. You know, people burp, people fart, people make the raspberry sound, people click their tongue, people hum and sigh and groan. Um but I don't know where you would learn these. So, hopefully, my lesson is a good starting point. Let's see here. John Wedge says, hey, Bob, no question today. Giving a good chat about Guns and Roses with Brent. We'll miss Dave. I wish you all the best. Thanks for that, John. And Key Park says, hi, Bob. What's the pronounce of the letter R in some word with some language, please? I don't know and can't do it. So, the letter R is tricky. So, for me, run, trouble, groan. It's a very soft R but when I speak French, like if I have to say frère, it's very hard and sorry to all of you who are native French speakers for kind of making a mess but it's very, c'est difficile pour moi de dire très, très, frère, soeur. The R is really hard for me because it's a different sound. Um, Daquan says, I watch Billy Billy. It's good. Thanks, Bob. The lesson is really wonderful from Omrin. No problem. Uh, let's see here. Rabia says, we can say whistling in the nose. Yeah, sometimes your nose will make a bit of a whistling sound. John Wedge says to Freddie, you're right. I've yawned after Bob. <laughs> there we go. When the lesson's over, that's when people yawn. That's what I think he's saying. Know that. Hey, Bob, what is the most common sound Bob the Canadian makes during the week? You know how I mean it. I say, hmm. I say, anyways. So, that's probably the probably the most common word. If you watch especially my short English lessons is I say, anyways. Anyways, that's how I start a new thought. Um but I'm not sure what the most common sound would be. Um Hafia says, do you snore in your sleep? Yes. If I sleep on my back, then I do snore. So, it's important for me to sleep on my side to avoid snoring and I do have a slide for snoring coming up. Uh Brent says, I can confirm. Thanks, Brent. Brent is confirming that these these are not strange or odd words. These are all, this is a lesson of very common words and phrases that we use in English. Uh, let me see. Let's let me make sure I didn't miss anything here. Wanda Prado says, hi, teacher Bob. How do you call the noise inside someone's ear? I think it's called tinnitus. It's when you hear a ringing sound all the time. I think that's the word you're looking for. Fabian says, no question today but I wanna say thank you so much, teacher Bob, for your labor. Greetings from Columbia. You are very welcome. Um John Wedge says, sorry, Bob, having above not giving, you're not gabbing. Yeah, that's I think you I recognize that that wasn't a word. Uh CST CS team says, no question today. Just say hello, Bob. Hello to you too. Uh let's see here. Omran says, hi, I think Brent is still yawning after the under the bridge lesson. That was I, I don't know if I could do that. Maybe when I visit Brent. No, I don't wanna say it. We're not sleeping under a bridge. I refuse to sleep under a bridge. Yaroslav says, I saw one of the poll on your page here on YouTube. Do you consider to start online lessons? I might. So, this past week, I did an online conversation practice session uh, and I had three people attend. Uh, Evgeny, Eva and Xiaoyu. Uh and it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. If I do online classes, it will be with probably no more than four or five people 
and it will probably be somewhat expensive just so that it's worth my time. Um because I don't wanna do classes of 10 or 15. If I do a conversation practice session with three or four people, then everyone gets a chance to talk and everyone gets a chance to listen. Um so, we'll see. It was a great session. I really enjoyed it. I might do more of them in September uh and then at different times of the day so people can sign up when it works best. So, thanks for asking about that. Um let's see here. Rabia says, and when we may eat something, we make sound also. Yes, we usually tell people to chew with your mouth closed because when you chew with your mouth open, it makes a lot of sound. We don't have a specific word for that. Um and then Mode wants me to pronounce écuré. Very difficult word for me to say. I probably really messed it up. Squirrel, by the way. Uh Amran, oh, Brent's saying to Amran, I'll rest it up. Hafia says, yeah, tinnitus. Pretty annoying but got used to it. Not good for musicians though. Yes, it's when you hear a constant ringing in your ear. Uh John Wedge says, once again, folks, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Thanks, John, for rem- reminding people. Stacy says, French pronunciation is much more difficult than English. My French friends said they are lucky because they don't have to learn French. La pronunciation française c'est plus difficile. C'est trop difficile. Uh, que l'anglais et mes amis français uh, ils ont dit qu'ils ont de la chance parce qu'ils ne doivent pas apprendre fran- le français. I don't know if I translated that correctly but there you go. Mode says, Mr. Bob, seriously, couldn't you pick a more proper topic to say goodbye to Dave? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. This is the topic. Dave goes, Dave leaves during the farting lesson. <laughs> oh, well, it's all good fun. Uh, what is the sound rumbling? Yeah, I need to do a lesson describing different sounds but rumbling is like that's that's a bad example. Um if your bearing on your vehicle is not working right, it would rumble. Um uh thi or thigh says, thank you so much. New words with MP. That's great. And Amrin said, oh, that's good to hear Brent. So, let me see. Let me check my time. Let me have a sip of water. So, I'm not gonna go crazy mentioning this. (coughs) So, (coughs) that was real. So, here's a good phrase for you. I took a sip of water and it went down the wrong hole. That's the English expression for when you when you're drinking something and it goes into your windpipe instead of your esophagus, I guess. So, you end up coughing. That was not stage. Um anyways, I'm not going to continually mention this but I do wanna say that this lesson has a study pack that you can find on my store. There's a link in the description below or you can go to bobthecanadian.com to see more. Uh let me see here. I'm gonna finish this off. Crisping. What is the meaning of this word? So, when you fry something, you are crisping it. When something is fried, it becomes crisp. When you bite it, it makes a cracking sound. Mode says, Brent has the audio clip that he plays to remind people to give a thumbs up but here we have John Wedge. He's the thumbs up reminder here. Yes, thanks for that, John. Automation Secure Home. Eugene says, I can translate your lesson to Chinese subtitles. Oh, that would be interesting. Although, it's supposed to do it automatically but anyways. A la place de il ne doivent pas, c'est plutôt il Ils n'ont pas besoin d'apprendre. Ah, merci beaucoup. I was expressing an opinion there too. So, I'm not sure if I was supposed to use the subjunctive. Mode says, Mr. Bob is having a coughing fit. Yes. Uh Daquan, Mr. Bob, do you know any Chinese? I do not. Um and Amrin says, what is the study pack, Bob? It is all of the slides from this lesson and then there's a crossword puzzle, a matching worksheet, a matching with pictures worksheet, a multiple choice worksheet, um a fill in the blanks worksheet sometimes and I don't know, there's 10 worksheets. It's designed mostly for English teachers but if you're a very keen, self-directed, independent learner, you might like them as well. Hey, I'm gonna turn off members only chat and we are gonna get back to the lesson itself. I have a few more slides to do. 
and I have a few questions in the question form but I will answer those as soon as I am done. Is everybody ready? Let's see here. I think we're good to go. Slides. Tap your feet. This is another thing people sometimes do involuntarily without thinking. Sometimes people do this because they're waiting somewhere and they're impatient. So, they'll tap their foot. That's not my actual foot. That's I'm just pretending but you will tap your feet when you're waiting for something. I don't often do this. I know a few people who tap their feet just whenever they're sitting because they they don't like sitting still. In English, when you sit still, it means you don't move uh and they like to tap their feet. Um and some people do it without making a sound and some people will like I know that um I don't wanna point this person out but there's someone I know in my life who taps their feet quite regularly um and it can be a little bit distracting. Snore. So, yes, I snore. When you snore, you make a sound with your mouth and nose while you're sleeping like that's like the weird snoring sound effect. It's because things are flapping in your mouth and the back of your nose when you breathe in and so you make a noise. It's not very nice. Snoring is not nice especially uh if you have a partner and that partner is sleeping in the same room or bed as you and they can't sleep because you are snoring. Not a very nice thing to do but you can't decide not to. Um by the way, like I said, I snore when I'm sleeping on my back. So, if I sleep on my side, I don't snore or I snore less. Pop or crack. So, we talked about cracking your knuckles, right? We talked about um you can make popping sounds. Some people can like turn their head and it will pop. Some people can kind of do this and make kind of a funny pop or crack. As you get older, this is more common. When I bend down, my one knee will pop or crack when I stand back up. It just kind of goes click. I don't think that's a good thing but it's one of the sounds that our bodies make. Wheeze. So, when you wheeze, it's like I'm gonna try and reproduce it like so, when I breathe, you can't really hear me. If I breathe quickly, you can hear me. If you wheeze, it means you're having trouble breathing. So, sometimes people who have smoked their whole life, when they get older, their lungs don't work very good. The what we use to breathe and they'll end up wheezing. Some people have what's called a puffer. So, this is something that so, it it puts some medicine or I'm not sure what to call it into your lungs and throat so that you can breathe easier. But you wheeze when you are having difficulty breathing and that's the sound it is like generally people who are sick um will wheeze. Like if you have a cold, you might wheeze. So, tisk. We don't I don't actually say tisk. Like I don't go tisk, tisk, tisk. But I do make this sound. So, it's similar to but much softer. So, I might walk into my classroom and there might be garbage all over the floor and I might go that's annoying. So, I'm putting my tongue at the front of my mouth and then pulling it back. That's the that's what my tongue is doing. It's on the roof of my mouth. And it's showed, it's used to show dissatisfaction. Like we often shake our head when we make that sound. Um like, oh, did you hear um the price of milk is going up a dollar? That's annoying. So, we kind of make like a like a disappointed look on our face and we shake our head and we're like, what can we do? So, tisk. No one, I don't think anyone actually says tisk. I think it's much more common. Uh, for people to um make that sound. It's not a very nice sound, is it? Sometimes there's like saliva is the liquid in your mouth. 
or phlegm is the stuff when you're sick. Like you just have something in your throat and in order to talk, you need to clear your throat. The word we use is ahem because that's the closest to the sound but most people it would sound like this. <clears throat> so, you're <clears throat> I'm trying to think. Do you, are you expelling air? <clears throat> you're just doing something so that you can talk. I'm gonna do a little example here. Sometimes, I'm talk <clears throat> and then I have to clear my throat. That I was just pretending but you've probably heard that before where someone's talking <clears throat> and they'll do that. <clears throat> By the way, it is polite to put your your hand usually like this <clears throat> and to if you're using a microphone <clears throat> to do it far away but sometimes you need to clear your throat. A groan. So, a groan is a loud sigh. It's an expression of dissatisfaction. You're not happy about something. If Jen said to me, um let me see. Oh, we're out of Let's see. I'm trying to think of something that I would find annoying. If Jen said to me, oh, let's say there were cookies in the kitchen and then after my live stream, I went to have a cookie and Jen said, the kids ate them all. I'd be like, ah. So, a groan is an expression. Like, it's not like which is a sigh, a soft expression. It's like, ah and we call that a groan. It's not a grunt. So, a grunt is when you lift something heavy like So, let's say these glasses were heavy. (laughs) That's a bad example. I might grunt when I'm lifting them but a groan is like ah. You make this sound that expresses your dissatisfaction and we call it a groan. I doubt you could hear that. Let's try that again. I don't know if this grosses you out. Like, maybe you don't like this. I know maybe you can hear that but a gulp is the sound that is made when you swallow. So, when you drink water or when you eat food or drink something else, when it goes from your mouth down to your stomach, you swallow it and you hear a gulp. That was a fake one by the way Um, but that is what we call it. So, um hopefully, you don't you don't regularly hear me gulp do you? Maybe you do. I don't know. Kind of a strange sound. Anyways, a gulp is the sound that is made when you swallow something. Hey, that's all of the regular slides. Don't leave though. I'm gonna answer some questions from the form to finish this lesson off. Let me find them. Let me get over here. We need to go to the next one. I think we did this one. From Min. Please teach me how to whistle. So, my dad taught me how to whistle but it's hard to describe. My tongue is against my bottom teeth. My lips are in a very small circle and then I blow out. Yep. I that's as much. Maybe there's a good YouTube video that will help. Leo from Brazil. Hi, teacher Bob. What's the difference between shout, scream, and yell? Thanks. Have a good one. So, a shout can be negative or positive. Like, I could shout to Jen, dinner's ready. Come in. I could shout or I could shout at one of my kids, stop doing that. So, shout can be positive or negative. Scream has two meanings. I can scream at someone which has a negative meaning. It means I'm angry. So, if I scream at one of my kids, I'd be like, stop doing that. Um a scream can never be positive. Scream can also be the sound you make when you're scared. Like when Brent was under the bridge, he might have screamed if someone jumped out. Okay? And then a yell can be the same as a shout. It can be positive. I can yell to Jen, hey, I made some breakfast. Come in and eat it. Or I can yell to um one of my kids, you know, stop eating all the cookies. So, that would be my personal description of those. Uh Orman. Hello, Mr. Bob. Is there any difference between the words laugh and giggle? Yes. So, a laugh is like ha 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 ha. That's a very bad fake laugh. A giggle is like (laughs) that's a bad giggle. So, 
they're both the same in that you're expressing joy or you think something's funny but a laugh is more like ha 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 and a giggle is more like hee 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 slightly different. I can't giggle on demand. So, sorry about that. Freddie the Frenchie. Bob, I don't have any question today. Pas de question. I just want to thank you for doing that kind of efficient lessons. All the best to you. No problem. This this was a fun lesson by the way. I really enjoyed this one. Um and then off topic but last one. Ashok says, teach me the accent from Toronto. Is this is this different from American Midwest or Vancouver? Any help? So, Vancouver and Toronto are gonna sound fairly similar. Um it would I wouldn't be able to tell if someone's from Toronto or Vancouver and the Midwest accent it de- depends on where in the Midwest you're from. Some Midwest states tend to well, let me just give you an example. Michigan isn't technically the Midwest. It's north but in Michigan, people call me Bab not Bob. Bab. So, their O sound is more like an A for some words. So, again, Michigan, not technically the Midwest. The Midwest is below that and to the west a bit more. Um but I would say Toronto and Vancouver might have slightly different new slang words but would sound very, very similar. Hey, that's the end of the lesson, people. We're gonna wrap this up. Thank you so much for hanging out and watching. Do remember, this lesson will come out in a shorter version in a couple days. This version, I remove all of the viewer questions and it becomes what I call a pure lesson. So, all 27 or 26 words in a smaller format, usually about 20 to 30 minutes long. It's really good to rewatch the lesson or at the very least, listen to the lesson. I have my lesson set up so there are no ads in the middle. There's ads at the beginning. Please watch them and ads at the end but if you want to listen to this lesson while you're cooking or riding the bus um or going for a walk, it's a good idea. Repetition, listening to something more than once is just a good idea when you're learning a language. Um another plug for my store, bobthecanadian.com. There's a link in the description below. There is a worksheet pack for this lesson there. You can go get it today if you wanted it uh and lots of nice stuff. All the slides as a PDF and a PowerPoint, crossword puzzle, word search, matching activities, um vocabulary sheets, everything you would need to help yourself review the lesson or to teach it to someone else. I do wanna thank Dave. Big huge thank you to Dave. Four years on the Bob the Canadian channel. It has been wonderful. Thank you for moderating live streams for so long. Um I I can't thank you enough. Um Todd left a year ago. We didn't really thank Todd because it was kind of short notice but uh Dave, thanks again. It's him been awesome and I wish you all the best in your next endeavors. Um I might be coming to find you though once you're done your software developing education to actually develop some software. We'll see. We've talked before a couple summers ago. We talked about a few things but anyways, I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you so much. Thanks to all of you for watching. I'm gonna start saying bye to people now. I'm gonna need my glasses today for some reason. Let's see here. Uh Freddie Wolf says bye and thanks Bob. What an amazing funny lesson. It's a pity that it's already finished. Yes, good things have to end. Bye to Sophia. Sophia says thanks a lot teacher Bob. John Wedge, bye. Bye to Daquan, Stacy, Vitor, Lolly Lolly. Know that. A lot of shout outs for Dave right now. That's awesome. Uh bye to Vicky. Greetings from Taiwan. Watching your video give me lots of great time. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye to Sung, Yaroslav, Brent from Speak English with this guy. Uh hope your school year's going good, Brent. Bye to Clive, Hafiez, Kima Kima, Unsel, Vitor, Eric, CS team, Mode Eggs, um Kana, Amran, Hafiez, Hsu, uh Freddie Wolf. If I miss your name, I'm sorry. I I try to get most of them at the end but sometimes it gets a little bit challenging. Uh anyways, it's Friday. I actually don't have a lot to do today. I have been working overtime and I think I'm going to relax because even though tomorrow's Saturday, I have a lot to do tomorrow. So, anyways, thanks for watching everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bobthecanadian.com. I should have a little thing on the screen, shouldn't I? It should be like right here, bobthecanadian.com. Like, if you want people to actually visit a website, 
you, you should have the actual words on the screen. Oh, I know. I can I can put it in the chat, can I? I think I'm allowed to put things in the chat like that. Probably didn't turn into a link. This is me uh learning on the fly here again. Let's see here. H Oh, yeah, I see my mistake. There's no such thing as HTTP is there? It would be like HTTP colon slash slash. By the way, you don't have to stick around and watch Bob learn how to do how to type things into the chat. There it is. Ah, I got it. Let me see. Now I can can I spam my own chat? Probably. I can. I can spam my own chat. By the way, I did a number of private videos for people last weekend. That was a lot of fun. You can buy one of those on the uh, store as well. Um it was cool to uh, and I have to do another one tomorrow for uh, a teacher in France for her class. So, I'm looking forward to that. Um anyways, <laughs> for real I'm leaving now. Bye everybody. I'm gonna click the button. I'm serious. It's gonna happen. <laughs>